All right, I'm delighted to say that Cork star Amy O'Connor is back with us in the studio. You're welcome back. Thanks, William. How are you keeping? Good, how are you? All good. Uh, <laughs> we were just chatting off air there uh, about a little bit of a lack of luck on the club front, and I was going to start off on, on a bad note as well when it comes to the inter-county stuff, so we may as well get that out of the way straight away. An All-Ireland semi-final this year, Galway, a point of, uh, of a difference in it in the end. Are you over it yet? Is it something that after the previous two years of success that it's easier to take or harder to take? No, it's definitely harder to yeah. take. Um, the one point is very difficult to take, especially because we were so bad on the day. Like I always say, you'd get away with maybe three or four players having a bad day. We probably had 12 and 13 players had an off day that day and it's just it just so happened that everyone's off day came on the same day, um, which is very frustrating and yeah, I was very disappointed. Um, but God, we were better than us on the day and we can't have any complaints. They were the better team, um, so yeah. Going for a three in a row obviously requires a huge level of consistent perfection. Was that the first time that you felt that you had a dozen or so players who were below par or had you managed to get through that on previous occasions over the last three years? Um, I'm not really sure. It is obviously very difficult to go for the three in a row. Mm. And as I say, we had too many people who had an off day on the same day. Like everyone is going to have an off day at some yeah. stage. And it just so happened that all of us had an off day on the same day. Um, so that was very frustrating, yeah. And is it, are you kind of sitting there in the dressing room afterwards saying to yourself, it's one of those things, we'll regroup and we'll come back next year? Or is there an analysis that you can do to avoid that happening again in the future? Well, I've, I've obviously analysed it myself and I kind of found it difficult to pinpoint where we went wrong. Um, we did go wrong somewhere and it's something that we do need to look at as a group. Um, I'm sure that Paddy and Niall and all the lads that were involved last year have looked at it in depth to see where they went wrong, see where we all went wrong. Um, and it's just something we're going to have to try build on and um, try regroup and get over it. Um, it was hugely disappointing. It was my first year involved that we haven't been in an All-Ireland mm. final. Uh, so it was a bit of a strange one. And for a lot of our management panel, it would have been their first ever championship loss. Um, now we've obviously lost games along the way, but we've never, like since I'm involved, we've never lost the semi-final. And it, it is a, it's a strange one to take. We kind of, I didn't really know how to feel afterwards, to be honest. Um, but yeah. Is it a situation now where you learn a lot more from this year than perhaps you learned from the previous couple of years? Or like, or did you actually, because I, I remember you were in with us at the start of the year and I think you'd said that there, a lot of efforts had gone in place to actually constantly evolve or constantly think about new ways to win and that was always going to be the aim at the start of the three in a row quest. Yeah, definitely. Like, you always need to improve year on year and this year, I suppose, we just didn't do enough. Um, now, as I say, I don't... I, I can't pinpoint a specific point in the season where we went wrong or something that specifically was wrong with us on that day, um, which is obviously the management that was involved will have to look at that and see where we all went wrong. Um, but it, it, it is a very difficult one to take. Um, to be honest, we were awful on the day. Galway were much better than us. Um, is it a weird feeling being somebody who can hold their head up high from an individual performance perspective, like, I, I, granted, I'm basing that on the All-Stars, like, be, being the only Cork person to, to get into the team, I think, uh, in the end. Um, like, is that any consolation whatsoever a couple of months down the line? I, I presume it's not, but it, from a personal level in terms of giving you that confidence going into next year? Well, personally, it obviously is a great achievement, and mm. I was thrilled with the award, but, like, at the start of the year, you don't set out to win an All-Star, you don't sure. set out to win Player of the Years, you don't. You set out at the start of the year with, your 30 odd panel members, the however many in the management setup to win in All Ireland, and a year is not successful unless you win in All Ireland at the end of the day. Especially in Cork, like we're very like basically winning, not winning is not good enough. And um, so overall, it was a very disappointing year. Obviously, the All Star was um, it was massive for me. It was massive for my club, and um, but I can't say that it made up for for anything. Like it, it didn't. And um, still hurts obviously that we lost to Galway. Um, but I suppose going into this year now, it'll be the first year that, I know we lost to Kilkenny a few years ago, um, but it'll be the first year that we don't have the target on our backs. Do you know, we're not the team to beat anymore. Mm. It's it's Kilkenny, it's Galway, more probably more so Galway, and maybe Kilkenny as well because they've lost so many finals that they're now the teams to beat. They're the teams that everyone want to beat. All the kind of, the other teams involved will want to beat them. Um, so... Yeah, maybe there's not a target on our back anymore. We're not the team to beat.
You said there that the All Star was massive for your club. Uh, St Vincent's Knocknahini, the first person to win an All Star uh, from the club. What what was that reaction like? What were the people <laughs> back home saying after you picked up uh, the award? Um, so I won the award on say the Saturday night. Um, rang our club chairperson to tell him, but he obviously already knew um, from Twitter. <laughs> and then the following day, I was bringing bringing the award to the club to show the chairperson um, and to show a couple of girls on say my own team, my own junior team, my friends like and um, when I arrived at the club there was basically hundreds of people there gathered to welcome me home. There was a guard, guard of honour, there was a DJ, it was just like it was unbelievable what the club done for me and it just showed what it meant to the club um, and to all the people where I live. Um, so it was a huge, it was a huge honour for me to bring that back to the club um, and to see all the small kids kind of in awe that someone in their club won an All Star. Um, I know, say like the likes of Gemma O'Connor, who has so many All Stars, her club probably take it for granted at this stage. But sure. they're like to my club, it's not something to take for granted. It's huge honour for me to bring it back, and um, the club were delighted with that. Can you talk to us about just how important a role St Vincent's plays in a place like Knocknahini? Yeah, like obviously the, we have a huge kind of stigma around our area that there's big problems with drugs, alcohol, antisocial behaviour. And our club does so much in our area to try to keep people involved in something. And it doesn't, ha it doesn't mean that they have to play. They can be involved in a team, like as a manager, as a coach, coach a few kids in the academy. It just keeps people involved and it keeps people interested. And it's so important in our area to try to keep people off the streets, to try to keep them involved, like keep them with their friends, keep them on the straight and narrow and it's just it's so important in our area to keep that going um, and there's huge work being done in the club for that. It, was it a situation where you, that you experienced it first hand where there was teammates of yours that were perhaps dropping off for, for various reasons as you were growing up? Yeah definitely it drives me absolutely insane when I think of the girls that we've lost along the way like gifted players like gifted that if they were probably in any other area they would have went on to do massive things with Cork and um, even young girls now in the area, they're 16, they're 17, and like they're not playing anymore because their friends aren't playing, their friends are out drinking, their friends are doing this, that, and the other. And it just it, it drives me insane that it maybe if they were in another area, they wouldn't be kind of, I don't know, they wouldn't be shown that that behaviour is normal. Whereas in our area, maybe it is normalised a bit much. Um, so yeah, it does, it frustrates me. And I've seen so many players kind of lost along the way. Um, but this year we kind of, we got a couple back and it was good. Now there's still, there's loads of work to be done. But this year was definitely positive. Even though we lost in the semi-final, it was positive in that. We really built a good team there. And I hope that these younger girls that have kind of gone by the wayside a bit, these very talented girls, will look at the club and look what's being built there and maybe be drawn back to it. Do you appreciate your own role in that? That I know you've had plenty of people say to you, well, you should move on to a more recognised club, a, a senior club, somewhere that might give you a better opportunity. But by staying, you are the emblem of the, the people that can actually go on and achieve great things by staying in Knocknahini, staying playing for St Vincent's. Do you, like, do you appreciate that role now or is it something that you try to, to not focus on? Well, it's not something I really focus on because I play and I play with Vincent's because I absolutely love the place. I, like I always say, it'll never mean as much to me to win, say, a senior county with a so-called bigger club than win something with my own club. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been very successful. We haven't won anything, really. Um, but I hope that in years to come, we will build something that people will be winning. And it's not even all about winning. Like It's about being part of something. Um, but it, like obviously, the younger children probably do look up to me a bit um, because... When I was a child, I had to look outside of my club, mm. had to look at the likes of the bars for Gemma O'Connor, um, Orla Cotter would be, they'd be my two heroes growing up. And I had to look outside my club, but maybe now the girls, and even the boys, because they, like the boys in our club, what I love the most about my club is that it doesn't matter that I'm a female, they treat me exactly the same as they would if I was a male inter-county player. And then it goes even further when I am Amy O'Connor and I was lucky enough to win an All-Star last week, but I'm treated the same as a six-year-old child who's just joined. Yeah. And that's what I love about my club so much. And I'd never, I'd never leave. Like, I'd, like obviously there was rumours a few, year, few years ago that I was going to go and I was going to sign here and sign there. And, but at the end of the day, it would never mean as much to me as if 
if I won something with Vincent's. And is there an overall reason why you say people might have slipped off, got involved in the wrong choices in their life perhaps, that they're coming back now? Is it... Like, is there a specific thing that Vincent's are doing or, or, or any reason yeah. why they are coming back? Like, there's huge work being put into the club and, like, the more people come back, the more again will come back because they'll follow, they'll see that something great is potentially happening in the club. And we just, we're trying, like, even the Camogie side of it, there's huge work going in that it's being taken so much more seriously than it has been in previous years. And um, We had a couple of great coaches in this year and it was brilliant for the club and when people see that high standard being put into the camogie, then it'll only attract people to go there and to go back playing. And obviously there's so many people that I'd love to get back playing yeah. that don't yet have the interest. But as soon as you start kind of doing something good and maybe start winning things, people will want to come back and that's what it's all about. We just want people to be involved in something. And was it ever a gender specific thing in terms of people falling by the wayside where the boys more likely to hang around in Ochnahini and play a bit, a bit of hurling or, or, or what was the situation there? No, equally I'd say, if you looked at the figures, I'd say both right. girls and boys were falling by the wayside like they were dropping out. Probably around 14, 15, 16 is kind of the age group. We'd, like we don't have a 16 camogie team or a minor camogie team. We had to amalgamate with another club for a minor team to kind of facilitate other girls. Um, so I couldn't say that it's more boys or more girls but around that age group, it's very difficult to keep people involved. And you can see that when we don't have the 16s team. Now, our boys on the 16s team this year have done very well because the coaches that were involved in them really put in time with them. And they actually went down and won. They won the football and they won the hurling in their division. So, like, that's a positive that we know have a winning under-16 team. Whereas mm. in previous years, maybe we wouldn't have had that because people would have they would have dropped out and they would have left and they would have done this and that. So that's definitely a positive. Yeah, it's very interesting. I clearly realise the role you have to play for boys as well as girls. It's, yeah. it's everything. It's, it's seeing a successful sports person in yeah. their locality. And I guess there's so many other clubs like that all around Ireland. It's, it's not just uh, in areas of Cork. Like We, we did a piece uh, a couple of uh, last year with Kevin's Club in inner city Dublin and uh, the role that they have to play in an area of Dublin, that can be quite challenging at times and just trying to get green yeah. spaces and things like that you clearly are somebody who can speak firsthand about the role that the GEA can actually play in, in helping people like that and helping them along the right path. Yeah, like I always say there's something very special about the GEA. I know people outside of the GEA probably criticise the organisation a bit, um, but there's something very special about the GEA. And I, like, from my own experience playing soccer, say, there is just that specialness about the GEA and... It's like a community, it's you're all in it together, do you know that kind of way? Yeah. And I think that's that's something that the GA has over other sports. Um, it's a real community thing, it's a real parish thing. Um, and I think that's very special. Uh, a final point, uh, where's Camogie at at the moment in your view as a game, as a spectacle in terms of how it's refereeing, how it's refereed, uh, in terms of an attractive spectacle? Um, well I thought the All-Ireland Final was a great watch, mm. um, as hard as it was for me to watch it. I thought it was a good watch. Um, I do think it can improve again. Um, we want to, at the end of the day, we want people to go to games and excite them. We want to show the skills of the game. Um, and I think it will improve. There's a lot of work on in this year since the start of the year, since all of the, the kind of players speaking out about the rule changes. There's a, a committee now set up to look at the rule changes. Um, I think like it may have sounded very negative at the start of the year, but it, we just kind of want to bring it to the next level. We want to bring it to the sport we know it can be, like the skill, the speed. Um, we want to excite people, like the hurlers excite people. And I do think that we can do that. Um, so I think there's a bit of work being done lately and they're going to implement some changes in the rules. Um, so like I, I know at the start of the year people were saying, oh, the women are calling for shouldering to be introduced to the game. Like That wasn't the goal at all. The goal was to kind of have a more free-flowing game um, and cut out the freeze a bit because it was becoming a game of free takers. Um, and I, th I think with a bit more work, then we can go forward with it and we can make it the sport that we all know it can be. And at the end of the day, that's why we're speaking out about it, because we want just as much as the association, just as much as the referees and just as much as the rest of the counties, like, we want it to go where we know it can go. I, like, I'm, I'm a firm believer that, like, Camogie can take off and it's, it's at a stage now where it could really blow up um, and, like, be massive. Um, what, what needs to happen for that to happen? Like it's probably down to parents taking their kids to, to more games and things like yeah. that. Is that probably the first step? So yeah, I definitely think that. Like I always say, it drives me insane when you go to a Cork Senior Men's game, 
and you're down in Parky Cueve and there's hundreds of little girls there, I think like I know like I'd challenge say men with daughters and even sons as well to bring their children to a camogie game because at the end of the day their daughter is not going to be playing hurling she's going to be playing camogie and if you make this step right now to get camogie to increase the attendances then when by the time your daughter plays camogie could be huge camogie could be just as big as hurling and it won't be a matter of like women's sport it'll just be sport mm. so like that would be my kind of my idea, I'd challenge mothers, fathers, bring your daughter to a camogie match instead, of, not even instead of a hurling match because they can go to both, they can watch both. But like, even with the camogie games, they're much cheaper than the men's games. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you're investing in your daughter's future by doing that because if you keep bringing your daughter to games, more people are going to games and by the time she gets to play, you might be filling out Croke Park. Like, that, I hope that one day, I'd love to say that it would be in my playing career that we will sell out Croke Park um, and it will be just as exciting as hurling. Um, it may never be as physical as hurling, just based on physiology and things like that. Um, but that would be my thing. If you have a daughter, bring her to a camogie game. Yeah, it's a, it's a good message. And I guess that kind of comes back around to what we were saying about Nakahini as well, in terms of people actually just viewing you as a sports person in the community yeah. that's done great things and hopefully we'll get to that point uh, in Camogie. Uh, Amy, very best of luck with the next couple of months. I presume you're going to go back to training pretty soon or are you taking a bit of time off? No, I'd say we should go back fairly soon. Um, we've been out now since the 19th of August, I think, yeah. or the 18th of August, which is kind of a long layoff. We wouldn't be really... The winter was very long already. Sure. So hopefully we'll be back soon enough. Well, best of luck with all of that. Great chatting to you. Amy O'Connor, thanks, thanks a million. Thanks.